So the Chiefs just signed someone who was in theory meant to ride the bench the entire season, but is actually so good at something the Chiefs almost lack completely that he could not only see playing time, but make KC's offense even more effective in crucial situations. And in this video, I'll dig into why I think this could very well happen, but not before I talk about the young and talented running back the Chiefs had in for a visit today, as well as the running back they just re-signed on a one-year deal. So let's talk about it. But first, how about those? First up, the Chiefs hosted an intriguing running back today with Adam Schefter reporting first that free agent running back J.K. Dobbins is visiting with the Chiefs today per his agency. Dobbins visited with the Chargers last week and the former second round pick of the Ravens, quote, is expected to have a home very soon. Dobbins is only 25 years old and had a pretty standout college career at Ohio State but has basically been riddled with unfortunate injury after unfortunate injury during his short NFL career. Since 2020, he's only played in 24 total regular season games out of 68 he could have played in if healthy. He had a nice rookie year in 2020, racking up nearly 1,000 yards from scrimmage and 13 touchdowns, but sadly tore his ACL the very last preseason game of the next season, 2021. So that caused him to miss the entire year. Then in 2022, he missed nine more games due to continued knee issues, and in 2023, he tore his Achilles week one of the regular season. I mean, we thought CEH was hit with the unfortunate injury bug, but compared to Dobbins, CEH's injuries don't seem too bad. Don't get me wrong, it's not Dobbins' fault, it's just extremely unfortunate so far in his career. And since his Achilles tear that he sustained week one of the 2023 season, he got it repaired, and just last week has been cleared for football activities with a man, I believe, is his doctor noting Dobbins looks quote-unquote outstanding in his recovery. And that's when Dobbins visited with the Chargers a couple days later and now is in KC today for a visit of his own. And I won't lie, Dobbins is intriguing due to still being so young, again, only 25. He's shown great vision, a quick burst, ran a 4.4440 at his pro day, I believe. Then back in college, he ran a lot of plays from the gun and a lot of RPOs at that, which is obviously very Andy Reid-like at times with the Chiefs offense. I definitely see ways that he could fit in the Chiefs system. And if the Chiefs can get him on a cheap deal with incentives built in based on the amount of games or overall playing time he's able to get, i.e., the more he stays healthy and plays, produces, etc., the more this man gets paid. Well, if that's the case, I'm down to bring him in. However, even with the addition of Dobbins, I'm not so sure that means the running back room would be ready to go as a one-two combo of just him and Pacheco. So either way, I'm intrigued to see if Dobbins does indeed land in KC once all is said and done. I will say Hollywood Brown likes the idea, tweeting out to him and telling him to, quote, think diamonds as a nod to Andy Reid's texting tactics, but do you guys like the idea as well? Or does his injury history scare you away? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, hey, speaking of running backs, uh, we have some running back news because shortly after J.K. Dobbins visited with KC, it was announced that the Chiefs signed wait, rather, re-sign running back Clyde Edwards-Alaire to a one-year deal. So the same day J.K. Dobbins visits, he leaves, they sign CEH instead. And from what I understand, this is not a either-or situation. Nate Taylor of The Athletic reported that down the road, a partnership could be something that happens later this offseason, with Taylor adding that his visit today was productive for both parties. So CEH returns, J.K. Dobbins is to be determined, question mark. I'm not sure if the signing of CEH was already going to be announced today before J.K. Dobbins was scheduled to visit, or the Chiefs had that visit with Dobbins first before deciding whether or not to sign CEH. But either way, you're getting a vet that you know that you know that you know knows the system. And Clyde Edwards Elaire, I have no problem with the signing. I kind of expected it to be honest. They did decline his fifth year option, which was gonna be around $5 million this season. So that was a no brainer, decline his option. But if you could bring him back on a cheap one year deal, maybe add some incentives in there based on playing time and performances, I am all for it. Again, when healthy, CEH, he's not the most elite athletic running back in the world, but he has shown that he can get the job done. He broke off several large runs last year, uh, had a big touchdown catch, climbing the ladder for the score in a different game, catching a pass from Patrick Mahomes. So again, this isn't some elite signing, but I do like the signing of CEH, especially with Jarek McKinnon, still a free agent, and you have no idea what is next. So you have Pacheco, 
than Clyde. Maybe J.K. Dobbins down the road. You've got Daenerys Prince and Michael P. Ryan cooking on the practice squad. They signed LRZ, who is also listed as a running back for what it's worth. And then they could still pick one up in the draft. So if you were surprised about the signing of CEH, well, you're not alone because I was too. Definitely thought when I saw the running back announcement, it was gonna be J.K. Dobbins. But hey, CEH is back. Let me know your thoughts on that one. And then the Chiefs just signed veteran quarterback Carson Wentz to a one-year deal late last night. And I swear, Brett Veach is either a vampire or just a night owl. But almost every Chief signing this offseason has been late as hell. What is up with that? Anyway, Jordan Schultz was on it first, reporting Wentz's signing as a backup on a one-year deal at 9.41 p.m. last night. I also like how he felt the need to let everyone know that Wentz is going to be the backup. Well, thank you so much for that clarification. The Chiefs reportedly had interest in Wentz last offseason, but Chase Daniel, another former Chiefs backup, shared that Wentz thought he was worth more than the Chiefs offered and ended up signing with the Rams around week 10 last season. He may have regretted not taking the KC deal because he wasn't in the league for over half the season. A player can think he's worth more, but the market is what dictates a player's value. This isn't a direct comparison by any means, but we saw that with Snead when the Chiefs got a third round pick out of him for next year, the 2025 NFL draft when Legereus was projected to command a second round pick for this year. Again, not apples to apples, but this stuff happens all the time. Players don't get what they want due to the market and teams themselves don't either, whether it's for a player they hope to sign or one they're aiming to trade away. Anyway, I get why Wentz felt he was worth more. He's a former second overall pick in the 2016 NFL draft just one year before Patrick Mahomes was drafted. And during Wentz's eight year career, he racked up 47 wins and 45 losses, throwing for over 22,000 yards and 153 touchdowns. He made the Pro Bowl in 2017 and also played a big role in the Eagles winning Super Bowl 52. I mean, yeah, Nick Foles finished out the season playing from week 14 on after Wentz tore his ACL. But before his injury, the Eagles were like 10 and three, something like that during the season with Wentz leading the charge. So yeah, I'm sure Wentz thought he would get more money than he was offered by KC last offseason. After all, he just started 17 games for the Colts in 2021, leading them to a nine and eight record, but his stock fell dramatically when he was with the Commanders going two and five with them and was eventually benched. And with that, the Chiefs probably offered Carson a deal very similar to what they offered Blaine Gabbert, who last offseason signed a one year $1.3 million contract because they have Patrick LeVon Mahomes. So Blaine Gabbert basically signed a vet men deal or very close to it, which is what Carson Wentz most likely signed for just last night. We don't have the contract details as of yet, uh, but it's probably very close to what Blaine signed last year. And that's because the Chiefs budget for QB2 is what it is with Patrick Mahomes at the helm. And Wentz took a gamble last offseason, but now finds himself in KC after all for this year. And I personally love this signing. I think he's a clear upgrade over Blaine Gabbert for the QB2 spot, has the most starting experience of any Mahomes backup and very recent starting experience at that. He can still sling the rock, is not afraid to use his legs, and with him being just a few years older than Mahomes, he's still got plenty left in the tank, even if it's as a backup quarterback. I mean, if God forbid Mahomes goes down for a game or two or three at worst, Wentz will more than likely be able to effectively run the offense while utilizing more of the team's playbook than some backup QBs in the past and more than likely win most of those games. That's no knock to Chad Henney either, but he retired after Super Bowl 57, can't get him back. So the Chiefs have wanted Wentz since then for a reason. I mean, look at this wild stat Charles Goldman dug up. Wentz basically has as many wins as Chad Henney, Matt Moore, and Blaine Gabbert, the last three backups combined, as well as roughly half the losses. This is a very solid signing, and that's not even mentioning one of the most intriguing reasons the Chiefs could use Wentz to drastically help the offense that has struggled greatly in one key area in recent years. But before I get to that, I gotta shout out the sponsor of today's video the HBTC blend of Benchwarmer Brew. This has kept me going strong during all these late night free agency signings, leaving me with a victorious buzz every morning because after all, this is a coffee modeled after the back-to-back -back champs. With origins of Mexico and Ethiopia, this smooth medium roast not only has the endorsement of Brandon Perna, but is also one of the top selling blends of the bunch. And to support the channel and get yours today, just go to coffee.hbtchiefs.com or click the link in the description below. Now. 
Here's something the Chiefs could use Carson Wentz for that they haven't really been able to effectively do in years. Sam McDowell of the KC Star put out an interesting article this morning after the Wentz signing happened that discusses something Wentz does better than almost anyone. It's not a stat you think to look up, nor one that's commonly displayed, and that is the success rate of a particular quarterback running a QB sneak. Well, the Chiefs basically stopped that completely after Mahomes dislocated his kneecap in 2019 in the game against the Broncos. Mahomes said he wouldn't mind running it again in a presser, I think last season, with it more than likely only being used in a crucial playoff situation. However, just because Mahomes is open to doing something doesn't mean Andy Reid is gonna allow it. I mean, I'm not even sure if the team has that play in the playbook or you could even check to it at the line or they even practice it with an actual quarterback. I mean, sure. They've attempted it at times with tight ends like Blake Bell and even Noah Gray, but no dice on Mahomes. I understand the hesitancy because Mahomes is extremely valuable to the team, the best in the league, but that has definitely hindered the Chiefs' ability to convert on third or fourth and one and very short. In general, over the last two seasons, the Chiefs are about top five in converting third downs, just third and undisclosed amount, okay? Very good at third and five plus, but on third down with one or less or fourth down, one and less, they've only converted 52.4% of those attempts, which was 25th in the NFL. Part of that reason is because teams know the Chiefs are not gonna be running QB sneaks and therefore the very short yardage plays has been their Achilles heel. Well, what if Carson Wentz could remedy that situation for the team? Not only is Wentz a big man at 6'5 and approximately 237 pounds, but he's been borderline elite at QB sneaks throughout his career. You can see here that every single year Wentz has found a way to successfully run the QB sneak most of the time. Of his 53 attempts, Wentz converted 47 of them. Sure, from 2016 to 2020, Wentz was with the Eagles and had Jason Kelsey as his center, which definitely helps, you know, having the best center in football snapping you the ball. But in 2021, Wentz was with the Indianapolis Colts and still converted nine of his 10 QB sneak attempts, a 90% success rate. Sign me up, that's pretty damn good. So maybe, just maybe, a bonus of having Wentz around as a solid QB2 is also by utilizing him on third and fourth and short for the sneak. Sure, teams would know it's coming because he would be out there, but what are they gonna do about it? This man has a career success rate of 88.67% with this play, and more times than not, opposing teams knew he was gonna run it when he did. So if the Chiefs wanted, they could easily utilize wins for this and see their third and fourth and one or less success rates potentially skyrocket. I don't see any reason why they don't at least consider kicking the tires on it. And with that, I'd be curious to know your thoughts. Do you like the idea of Wentz being used on QB sneaks to help keep the chains moving on these key short yardage situations? Or should the Chiefs just stick to skipping the sneak altogether like they've basically done in recent years aside from the random tight end sneaks? Let me know either way in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.